In this video, we just want to take a real quick look at how we graph polar curves on a calculator. Um, this doesn't take long. I just need to show you where the buttons are and where the menus are and, and that sort of thing. So the steps are, are pretty straightforward. The big thing is you just have to change your calculator mode from function mode to polar mode, which we'll do in, in just a minute. I'll pull up my calculator and show you. Once that's done, it's pretty self-explanatory. You go to Y equals and type in your function that you want to graph, whether it be a cardioid or a rose curve or something like that, and then graph it and then adjust your window if you need to. All right, so let's, let's open up our TI and we're actually going to try this example here. R equals eight minus eight cosine theta. Let's see if we can figure out what this looks like. Eight minus eight cosine theta. Okay, so here's our, our calculator. We'll clear that out. Um, so if you go to mode, um, actually I've already got mine in polar mode. I was doing something earlier with polar mode. Uh, right now yours is most likely in function mode. Yours probably says F-U-N-C function mode. And you'll just slide this past parametric mode into polar mode and push enter. Uh, and what you'll find is now when you go to Y equals, it's going to look different than what it used to. It used to have y equals a function of x. You would have like y equals x squared. But now it's got an r and it'll be a function of theta. And so we'll, we'll take 8 minus 8 cosine theta. Uh, close that off. And we'll graph it. And we see something kind of funky happening here. So if it doesn't look quite right or something's not right, then go to your window. It looks to me like there's more actually kind of more to the left that I'm not seeing and probably higher and lower as well. So we'll go into window and I, I intentionally made this one too big. Um, we'll go maybe like uh, maybe minus 20 to maybe 10 or something like that. And then have a max of maybe like minus uh, 10 to 10. Maybe something like that. So we'll readjust that window, try it again. Uh, one thing up here that I, I forgot to mention was you have a theta min and a theta max. Uh, as you adjust that theta, it'll sketch out more or less of the curve. Kind of the default setting is zero to two pi. That's the 6.28 number. And so let's graph this again. And that looks a little better. The, the Y min, Y max could probably be a little better. But, um, but that, that's basically it. I, I, I won't take the time to go adjust the Y min, Y max again, but I think you get my point. Um, now what we can do is once you have it graph, and so this looks like a cardioid here, uh, we can actually start changing this around and seeing you know, what, what sorts of different answers we could get. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, since we're gonna play around with this a little bit, let me, let me actually just make maybe all these minus 20 to 20. Okay, and uh, this helps you get a good good understanding of polar curves. Okay, so like here's a cardioid. I've zoomed way out, but now I see how manipulations done to this function can affect the graph. For example, if I change the, the minus to a plus and graphed it, you'd see it flips around the other direction. Or maybe, you know, if you change that cosine theta possibly to like a, you know, maybe a sine theta, for example. Let's see what that does. Say, oh, okay, that's interesting. It turns it vertically instead of horizontally, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, the calculator is very helpful because you can graph these so quickly. Um, and it's actually quite simple to do as long as you change the mode and change your window.